Hello everyone, welcome back to Techies on Wheel. Today we will discuss in detail about the RP implementation phase, including the development testing and the go life planning. So we will try to cover almost all that you need to know. We will cover who all are involved in the implementation phase, how the implementation process works, what all documents are involved in the entire process, and what needs to be done before we are ready for the next stage. So let's get started. First, talking about who all are involved in implementation phase, the very crucial role, the one who plays is the developer. Developer are involved in the development of the bot basis, the approved PDD and the solution design document. PDD, uh, I'm referring to the process design document, which is approved before the initiation of uh, implementation phase. Once the bot is developed, developers does the unit testing of the modules um, which is developed by the developer. And while doing that unit testing, whatever defects comes in picture or while doing the UAD testing, whatever defects comes in, developers fixes it and move it back for testing. This goes in cycle until unless the entire uh, the, uh, bot developed is robust and is working as expected and drafted while in the designing phase. Once the uh, entire code is developed, bot is ready um, in parallel, developer also works on documentation. The documentation involves for installation, configuration, or the bot run guide, which is going to be used in future or while transitioning from developer to the support team. So all these documents runs in parallel while the developer builds or uh, work or encounters any of the scenarios which he or she thinks that needs to be covered in document that needs to be captured carefully there. And then there is another document which is bot run handover checklist. So this is a kind of checklist which if there, uh, if say your bot is going to run in an attended mode or even in unattended mode, what needs to be done as a prerequisite or configuration, what needs to be done for the uh, bot run to happen as expected. So all these things needs to be documented carefully. The next role played by is with solution architect. While the developer develops the code, solution architect review those code so that uh, they ensure that the code developed or written or designed is working as expected and, and is following the industry best practices. There are a lot of benefits which comes up with the uh, code review and uh, while ensuring that the developer is following industry best practices, that it helps an easy handover um, from one developer to another developer, or while even if we are uh, transferring the bot to the support team, this is really helpful. We'll talk in detail about different video on the onto the code review. But uh, apart from code review, Solution Architect also helps the developer with the bot documentation. Uh, while reviewing those documentation, if anything is missing, that needs to be captured. Solution Architect reviews and uh, show the uh, feedback with developer. The other one is the infra readiness and deployment plan. So while the developers are working on the code and uh, making sure that bot is performing as expected, it's uh, the responsibility of a solution architect to ensure that the infra, which is UAD or say prod uh, or pre-prod infra is ready. And what's the deployment plan? What needs to be done once the code is uh, coding is complete or the development phase is completed? In some organizations, it's uh, done by developer itself, but ideally uh, we should not overload developer with the, all these uh, extra work. And uh, the sole responsibility should ideally lie with the focusing on developing the robust and uh, a good quality code. And that's where this role gets transferred to solution architect, but it again depends organization to organization. And then the other act, uh, activity, which again, uh, it again depends uh, organization to organization, but ideally should be kitty of solution architect to get the necessary migration approvals, uh, be it be raising the snow ticket or the CR or uh, working onto the accesses or getting the configurations done in the production environment. Say there is a server in some organization, it needs to go through a proper um, ticketing. There needs to be a ticket raised before we migrate the board from one system or one server to the another server, say development server to UAT server or UAT to pre-prod or prod server. So this should ideally be taken care of by solution architect. Sometimes it's uh, um, 
being done with collaboration with BA or the PM. Um, and even in some organization, I've heard that um, developer takes care of it, but ideally it should be done by solution architect. The third person who plays a critical role in implementation phase are the business analyst. The uh, while the developer develops the code and does a unit testing and confirms that, okay, the code is ready in an ideal scenario. And again, following the best practices, business analysts should, should actually review the bot run and should do a internal testing before actually going into the UAD testing with the client. It helps to gain a better confidence of the client and also be confident onto the solution of the uh, developer that it's working as expected and drafted in the PDD. So that internal testing and initial sign-off is being given by a business analyst. In some companies, some organizations, it is being done. In some, it, it directly goes to the uh, UAT. So it, it again depends. Business analyst also coordinates with solution architect for the infra readiness, like I mentioned earlier. They coordinate with technical and uh, technical team and the client for UAT and help maintains the UAT result verification report and the uh, coll collaboration for the UAT sign off management. All these things are being done by business analyst. Once the UAT is approved and the bot is moved to hypercure, again, uh, monitoring or uh, monitoring the performance of bot or uh, any incident or change reported in hypercure these uh, things are being taken care of by business analyst with help of the uh, technical team, which is again involved slightly if there are say incidents or bugs reported. So again, developers or the technical team is on standby in this hypercare phase. It depends uh, again, uh, two to four weeks of time frame in many organization for the hypercare where what is monitored in production like environment or maybe brought with monitored run uh, just to ensure that bot is performing as expected in the production environment as well. And the uh, most critical role played, of course, is by the client or process owner who uh, does the bot run review, be it be in UAT or hypercure and provides the UAT sign off. But uh, to sum it up, developer develops, solution architect reviews it, business analyst act as a bridge between all of these people and um, ensures from their end that the board is performing as expected. And the final is the client who is reviewing and giving the final sign off for the product for the board to move to production environment. So this sums it up, sums it up mostly on to who all are involved in the implementation phase. Um, moving on to how the solution design process works. So once we have the PDD plus SDD approval, Developer develops, does the unit testing, does debug fixes, and document all the uh, most of the things, which is uh, which we talked about in, early in the earlier slide. Then solution architect does the code review, deployment readiness, and technical looks onto the technical approvals required. And then comes the BN process owner who does the bot review and gets all the necessary approvals for the migration. And then once we have all the approvals done and bot has moved to hypercare, in parallel, we also start uh, giving the support handover for the bot maintenance. And uh, yeah, bot is in production. So comes the production phase. This sums it up overall onto how solution design process works. Um, now, moving on to the next one on the implementation documents. We discussed a lot about what all documents are involved in this entire phase. Um, it does not only captures uh, the implementation phase does not only comprises of coding and uh, the testing, but it the ideal scenario, or I would say the best uh, case scenario should be that it should be well documented as well, the entire process. So what all documents comes is the very first starting with code review document, which uh, the solution architect and the developers uh, document while reviewing the code to ensure that coding best practices are followed. Then the unit testing document, which is again maintained by developer while doing the modular testing what all bugs were reported, how what, uh, how and what needs to be done. So that's the unit testing document. Then we have the UAT tracker, which captures the UAT test scenarios and how the bot performed against those scenarios. Then we have bot user guide. This user guide defines how the bot uh, uh, 
needs to run or what are the prerequisites or um, any specific things like say example there is an input file which needs to be created for uh, to be provided for bot run how that input file should be if there are certain columns defined say example so what should be the sequence of column if it's sequence dependent or um, you know, if it's case sensitive or say if uh, it's uh, ideally say example um, the first column of an excel input which um, may be required for what is uh, say case id so case id should the column name should be case id only um, if in case say if someone goes and changes that case id uh, uh, word to say um, uh, case number the bot may not capture it because the bot is designed to read case id so these things needs to be clearly mentioned that what is a prerequisite and what needs to be done for the successful bot run. Then we have release notes, which says that uh, what fixes if there are say done in the bot, what ideally depends on to how many releases your bot goes through and what needs to be documented for each releases goes here. And then if there are any additional supporting documents, say uh, any specific to your organization, which needs to be maintained for handover between one team to another team or say with the client or any other documents or supporting documents created, these all thing needs to be done in the implementation phase. So it's the most important phase, of course, after the um, process design phase, I would say, or the documentation or the initial discovery phase. And it's quite time, uh, the most time consuming, I would say, phase of the entire RPA journey is the implementation phase because it brings the uh, imagination into reality in this phase. So, um, yeah, uh, once we are ready for the next stage, uh, before that, we need to ensure that industry coding best practices are followed. Uh, and of course, this needs to, uh, uh, this would benefit in the long run uh, for. Uh, for the bot maintenance, then the UAT and fraud infra readiness should be targeted to be completed in uh, while the developer is in development phase so that, uh, that um, we can avoid any delay in the UAT phase or uh, say the hypercare phases. And the last one is that the bot performance in UAT and hypercare should be thoroughly reviewed so that uh, no, none of the scenarios are getting missed. Um, and what performs as expected in production environment, because um, there is negligible, I would say, um, uh, negligible, there should be negligible errors in production to avoid any impact, because any issues or any bugs in production, if, if it goes, can be a huge uh, impact to the production or the um, actual client scenario. So this should be avoided at any cost. Um, and uh, of course, once the UAT is done, the testing is done and hypercare is done, it should be clearly documented and signed off with the client before we run into production. So that's how it sums it up entirely onto the implementation phase. Um, so moving on to the next. In the next video, we will discuss about the production and support phase um, in detail, what needs to happen in production, even once the bot is moved to production, what needs to be taken care of and what happens in the support phase while we are giving, while the developers give transition to the support team. So till then, keep learning, keep growing, stay happy and stay healthy. Thank you everyone.